Hi, I'm Katrina. Thank you for taking the time to watch my video. I hope you find it interesting, thought-provoking, and informational. My main argument for this project is that Siddha Thorianet not only wore jewelry for personal adornment, but also as a way of projecting her social status and for protection of her family. My secondary arguments are that every stone, metal, and color that she wore had meaning. Her inscribed pieces demonstrated the position she held in royalty. The images of Hathor showed her allegiance to the goddess that she was named after. That the pictorial rebuses that she wore were part of a tradition of handing down pictorials from pharaohs to their daughters. That amulets were a popular way of ensuring protection of not only herself, but of the pharaohs, and also that the finding of her jewelry was not only unique because of the style and quality of it, but also because of the sheer size of the amount that they found. Siddha Thorianet lived through the reign of three pharaohs. Sinesret II, her father, was influential in her jewelry in that he gave her a pectoral that spelled out a prayer for protection of him. Her husband and brother, Sinisret the Third, was very persuasive in making sure that every piece of art during his reign counted for something and had meaning. And then her nephew, Amenhat the Third, was also influential in her jewelry in that his name was inscribed on her bracelet. Sinisret III believed that every artistic endeavor had to have meaning. This included all jewelry. Some popular metals and stones that were used in Siddha Thorianet's jewelry were gold, silver, carnelian, amethyst, and turquoise. And each of these stones, while they had their own individual meanings, such as gold and silver for royalty, carnelian, brought peace and healing, amethyst brought, heal brought healing. The colors also had meaning. Blue was for the water of the sky. Red meant life, victory, or anger. Yellow was for eternity. Green, fertility, or joy and growth. Black, was for death, night, or stability. White was for purity or power. Inscribed pieces like the scarab and bracelet shown here help to visually establish Sitha Thorunet as part of the royal family. For those who were literate and saw these pieces with her would be able to associate her with the pharaoh Amenemhet Amenemhet the third. Siddha Thorunet translates to daughter of Hathor of Dendera. Part of the collection that was found in her tomb was a jewelry box made out of ivory and ebony with three emblems of Hathor inscribed on the top. In this box, there was also a hand mirror with an image of Hathor in the obsidian and gold on the handle. These objects show the affection and 
allegiance that Sinhethor Yenet showed to the goddess that she is named after. Evidence found in the tombs of 12th Dynasty princesses show a trend of pharaohs giving their daughters pector pectorials in the form of a rebuse. A rebuse is a representation of words or syllables by pictures of objects or symbols whose names resemble the intended words or syllable in sounds. Another type of jewelry that was found in Sitho Thorianet's tomb were those of model class. These model class were most likely worn as amulets. The one on the top left is the amulet of joy. Next to it is the amulet of two God's hearts are content. Below the amulet of joy is all life and protection. And then on the bottom right is the amulet for protection, also known as a Shin amulet. What makes Sithathorianet's collection unique is the size of the collection that was found. Her body, her tomb had been raided and robbed in early antiquity, taking everything including her mummified body. But the robbers did not get her four boxes of jewelry. In another pyramid complex similar to Lahun, in Deshur, where Sinraset III was buried, the princesses Sith, Sithathor and Mereret had similar conditions. Their jewelry was similar to Sithathor Yunet, but they didn't have quite as much jewelry as she did. As mentioned before, the 12th dynasty saw a trend of pharaohs giving their daughters pectoral rebuses. The pectoral featured here, Sinerset III gave his daughter Mereret to announce the official heir of Amenemhet as the new pharaoh taking the place of Sinisred III. A second pectoral found in the tomb of Mereret has a scene of her father lauding his victory over his enemies. The final piece to look at is another pictorial from Sinister III to his daughter Sithathor, not to be confused with Sinister II's daughter Sithathor Yunet. Sithathor was buried in the, the pyramid complex at Deshur in the lower chambers near Muret. In this pictorial, we have the two hawks but instead of clutching the shin symbol for protection, they are clutching the symbol for gold, perhaps to show the wealth of the pharaoh. The most important thing to take away from all of this is that the 12th dynasty jewelry that Sith Hathor Yunet, Meret, and Sith Hathor had was not just some frivolous piece of metal or stone. Each piece had a specific purpose in mind when it was created. Whether it be to call on a god to give protection or to identify themselves with the gods or with the pharaohs or to help to show the people that the Pharaoh has conquered the enemies and how great the Pharaoh is. Each piece shows exactly how much the 
these ladies supported their, fa their fathers, their brothers, and their uncles, their husbands, and their nephews. So thank you for taking the time to watch my video. I hope you enjoyed it.